Seven Land presents Paralyzed. Chapter 20 Where the Paths Meet, Part 5. They don't know if she was using cloud storage, right? They didn't find any evidence of that. Well, this laptop is pretty new. Which is why this is all they could pull. We had been in Spokane for a couple days now. We were still waiting to hear back on the phone data. The problem was we needed a court order to go through it, which was complete bullshit, since Roland was on the run. As the judge took his sweet time signing off on it, we focused our efforts elsewhere. Although... That phone was our only hope of finding something. I can't believe they're holding us up. With the phone? All of this is getting us nowhere. They're doing what they can. I'm not blaming your guys. Right. Detective Highland, who worked for the Spokane Police Department, had been helping us out. Right now, we were going over pooled images from the laptop. They were pictures of the woods and bodies. You're lucky you have this. But what is it? The pictures were eerie. Very similar to Leighton Falls and Rutherford. The bodies were old and weathered. We had just received the high-quality images today, and Robards was already on the phone with the SAC. We needed more information. And even though he allowed us to stay put in Spokane, we were worried about other involvement. We were fine with a little help, but they were trying to pull agents from all over and even get the CIA involved. It was worrisome. Bing, bang, boom! Work my magic, and guess who was in Alaska? She was? How'd you find that out? Phone records? No. Still no word on that. Confirmation on the images. These? These were taken in Alaska? Yep. Fill me in, Mick. Just got off the phone with the SAC. SAC? Special agent in charge. Our department head. Did he say if the CIA was jumping on board? Not yet. Walker has been on call after call. But he got a hold of the field office in Anchorage. These images are from the scene of that crazy bullshit they just uncovered several weeks ago. Didn't hear about it. Exactly. I looked at the images again. I told Walker just how similar they are to Terra Lake in Leiden. What do you say? Be cautious, take our time, don't jump to conclusions. You know, clarity. Oh, Jesus. Can we get some actual coffee? This is... I mean... This is horrible stuff. Yeah, we've had to scale back. If these are from Alaska... Exactly. So she was there. We know that for sure. Well, there were no witnesses. What do you mean? No one saw Roland? No one from the force. They asked around. She wasn't there during the scene. And look at the pics. No tape, no markers, no cops. You think she took them before anyone got there? She was first on the scene? Robards just shrugged. You're not suggesting she did this. (laughs) Look at the bodies. No, no, no. Those bodies are years old. But she had to be there to take those pics. Uh, Unless she somehow stole them. Could she do that? It wouldn't be easy. She'd have to hack her way in. (sighs) Especially if no one from the forest saw her in the area. But hacking? It's worth checking into. We need to find out if she was up there for sure or not. Although, I think she was. How do we go about doing that? Well, we would need to see every crime scene photo, see if they match up. What we really need is to get our phone data. What did Walker have to say about that? He's pressing. Says he'll get back to us later today. The moment they give us the go-ahead, I want those records. Phone company is on standby. (sighs) Good. So what do we do now? I need a break. (sighs) And I need coffee. We both looked at Highland. Yes, yeah, sure. I'll drive. I hope you know of a good place. <laughs> the best.
I couldn't sleep. Once again, I kept having nightmares, but now they weren't about the cruise or Roger, but of my parents. The report said they were shot. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw them standing there in the living room. A faceless man approached them and fired right into their temples, one at a time. They didn't run, they didn't scream, they just jolted back and collapsed to the floor. Maybe I should have taken Roger's advice. At least I wouldn't feel pain anymore. Because right now, I did want to die. I told you, Michelle. Oh no. Not again. I told you to do it. Go away, Roger. You can't sleep. And you're hurting. I know. You should have listened to me. No. Because it isn't you. But it is. It's me. Roger. Roger. I slowly turned to see him in the corner of the room, his face covered in shadow. I was in my own hotel room. Powell was staying in the room beside mine, but part of me wanted to go and wake him, t- to talk to someone. He's already He's awake, awake Michelle. What? He's already, He's already awake. awake. Look. Look. Roger pointed to the window. I slowly got up and made my way over. I peeled back the curtain to see Hal walking through the parking lot and towards a grassy field on the other side. Where's he going? He's going to find out where Roland is. She's over here? No. But there's, there's someone, someone he needs, needs to, talk to talk to. Who? His fiance. His fiance is dead. He told me that. So am I, Michelle. I turned around. I startled to see Roger, now in the center of the room by the foot of the bed. I still couldn't see his face. I talked to Hal too. I'm a cat. What does that mean? <laughs> when he doesn't realize it's me. What are you talking about? He's learning. He's learning. But his time will come. come. And it will come, come soon. <laughs> Why can't you leave me alone? <sighs> I said I'm sorry, Roger. I told you. I wish things were different. You know, I wish I was a better girlfriend to you. Like, I I wish I had another chance. This isn't about you. Or me. It's about something else, Michelle. And you get to be a part of it. I don't want to be. It it doesn't matter. You're going to be like all the others. There is no escape. He slowly glided towards me. Now I could see his face. His white eyes and crooked smile. It's coming. <laughs> I rushed out of the room. I rushed across the parking lot barefoot. When I reached the grassy field on the far side, I saw Hal just standing there. He looked like he was talking to someone. Was he experiencing the same thing as me? Hey! He spun around, startled. What? What? What are you doing? Me? Look where you are! He took a moment to examine his surroundings. It was as if he was in a trance and I just snapped him out of it. Oh. Uh, I, uh... Who are you talking to? No one. Bullshit. I, I must have been sleepwalking. No, you were talking to someone. Just forget it. Tell me! Please. Because I just saw my fucking ex-boyfriend in my room, and he... He told me you were talking to someone. That he's a dog to you. Is that how you know Roger? Have you seen him? No. I've never talked to your boyfriend. Why would he say that, then? It's not Roger. It's the Entity. Can I trust you? Hal looked around nervously. Yes, you can. Then why won't you tell me you were talking to your fiancé? It was a gamble to say that, but it seemed to spark something in him. He was taken aback, biting his bottom lip. Is that what Roger said? I nodded. I talk to her every once in a while. 
when she appears. She helps me. Helps you? Sometimes. How? She helps show me the way. Did she tell you where Roland is? Roger had a lot to say, huh? Yeah. That worries me. Why? Because I'm not sure who to trust now. Where did she say Roland was? In Idaho. Not far from us. Why didn't she tell us sooner? I don't know. That's something I gave up asking. She shows up when she shows up. He turned around to face the open field again. Is she still there? But he shook his head. No. She's not. I didn't end up going to sleep after that. I stayed up all night watching the news and infomercials until Hal came knocking. You ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna drop off the key and then we'll go. Okay. Also, this number. This was that detective? Hal showed me his phone. Yeah, her name is Ray, the one who called my friends asking about Roland. She called last night. I didn't see it till this morning. Should we call her back? Not right now. We know where to find her, and I still don't trust it. And with that, he pocketed his phone and headed for the front office. I know, Casper, I know. Hi there, Ray. Hi. Uh, I'm really sorry about this. Oh, don't be. You know I love the little bugger. Hey there, sweet thing. I handed Casper over to Miss Rowe, my next-door neighbor. Really, I'm thinking a few days, a week, tops. (laughs) How is your mother now? Last I talked to my sister, she's stable. Oh, dear. Even with my sister around, she managed to end up back in the hospital. Well, you know you're always welcome to let this guy come hang out. Casper pushed out of her arms and jumped onto the newly mopped floor. Miss Rowe had two cats of her own, and luckily Casper got along with them. Really, if it's too much trouble, you can put him back in my place. You have a key, and I have plenty of food set out, and I just cleaned his litter. Listen, if my two girls didn't get along with him, then sure, but this is no trouble. No trouble at all. Well, here. I handed her some cat food. Oh, honey, don't worry about that. I've got plenty of food. I know. I just feel bad, and here you are. I tried to hand her some cash, but she quickly pulled back. Oh, no, you are not paying me. Please, this is the second time this year you've taken care of him. I don't want your money. Don't worry about me or Casper. We'll be fine. Go take care of your family. and Let me know if anything changes. (sighs) Okay. I saw Casper sitting at the end of the hall, facing the den where I assumed the other cats were hanging out. Bye, Casper. Of course, he didn't turn around. Thank you again. You're welcome, dear. I had everything packed. I just needed to make sure everything was locked and turned off. I had already called the captain and told him about the bad news. Laurie was supposed to watch Mom. How did something like this happen again? I thought about calling Michelle again, and Jake, but decided against it. For now, you can talk to Jake when you're up there, Ray. Fill him in on everything. Every night was a struggle. 
waiting for the inevitable was anxiety inducing and the only thing that was able to help was diving back into these books Ray had given me a list of the books found in the Sanders home I found two on Amazon and another three at the library it was dark stuff witches, covens, rituals cults none of it lined up with what we had but still I searched for the past week I hadn't even worked on my own stuff It was only a matter of time before that caught up with me. But did it matter? The moment Ansel's friend found out me and Ray were involved in aiding Roland, well, nothing would matter much anymore. Hello, prison time. There was no mention of sacrifices that involved hanging bodies and gutting them. These books were worthless. I'd gain more insight reading Rosemary's Baby or watching The Craft. The only thing that made sense was for this to be ritualistic in some way. But I had no proof. Not only that, it didn't matter because I couldn't link the cases. (sighs) Because there is no link, Jake. At least nothing concrete. Roland and Ray had mentioned how the bodies weren't hung up by the suspected individuals. Okay, so that means others were there. The problem was the others they were referring to were past dead people. (sighs) This stuff was giving me a headache. Oh, shit. It was Ansel. My heart started beating rapidly. I sat there watching my phone, debating. I screw it. Yeah? What are you doing right now? I'm busy. Doing what? I'm working on something. Well, whatever it is, drop it. Why? Come down to O'Reilly's. I don't need a drink. I got plenty here. Come on, you lazy asshole. Quit working on whatever bullshit you got and get down here. Guess who just joined us? Who? It's a surprise. Just tell me. No, you'll have to see for yourself. He hung up on me. I really didn't care who it was. I didn't feel like leaving. (sighs) I looked over my mess of a table, feeling defeated once again. Well, Jake, if you can't solve this, you're going down. And if you're going down, might as well have one more decent night out. And hell, there's even a surprise. I walked to the back table where Ansel and Oliver were sitting. Look who decided to give up the hermit life for a fun night out. It's because I mentioned you know who. I thought you didn't tell him. I didn't. Who's here? Shut up, shut up. Here she comes. For a moment I thought Ray. But no. I turned around to see Amelia Leeds walking out, the hot-ass intelligence analyst that had started working with Oliver not too long ago. I got shots. Oh, hey Jake. Didn't know you were coming. Sorry, I only got three. (laughs) It's fine. I'll get my own. As they all downed some light green liquid, I got up and went to the bar. I looked for George, but he was on the other end. Told you you'd be surprised. Why's she here? Oliver invited her. She's grieving over a past relationship, and it's been hard for her. So Oliver asked her? Well, I pushed him to do it. You know, he wouldn't do such a thing. His wife would kill him. Right. Hey, you okay? Oh, I look okay. You look like shit. Thanks. Hey, I got a question for you. Shoot. Your friend Mick. You hear from him? Not recently. Why? Just wondering. You sure you're okay? Just need a drink. Then let's get one. George! George! Over here! It's your loyal customers! <laughs> Not gonna say. Hmm, must have been really bad. Yeah, just some things I like to keep between me, Joyce, and the rest of the higher ups. <laughs> because it'll land him in more hot water. Give us a little taste. I didn't know what time it was, but I was pretty drunk now. I think we all were. For some reason, we were talking about my rocky past with the Bureau. I can't say anything. We've been trying to get it out of him ever since it happened. Well, what I really want to know is how you ended up in cyber. If it's really that bad, how do you get a department? That kind of thing just isn't done. It's because Jakey here has a powerful daddy. <laughs> Had. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's not dead, just retired. Oh. 
Jake got plenty of perks. Yeah, like a short move. Short move? Jake's from Brockton. Jesus Christ. How much pull do you have? The guys always gave me shit for being stationed at the Boston field office. Most agents, when they become agents, are instantly moved out of the area. Far from their home. On purpose. But not me. I don't have much pull anymore. I don't know about that. What? He's working on his own little projects nowadays and taking time off whenever he pleases. As if I didn't get a good scolding. <laughs> Most would get leave. Unpaid. Yeah, why again were you in Vancouver? Don't worry about it. He keeps everything close to the chest. Solving his own crimes? So are you a renegade? A vigilante? <gasps> Maybe you're Batman. She smirked before taking a sip of her drink. No, Jake's not Batman. <laughs> he can't fight. I can fight. Oh, yeah? Holy shit, is that the time? Clock ain't wrong. I gotta go. Sadie's gonna kill me. she call you? No, that's how I know she's gonna kill me. When she doesn't call or text, I want to get scary. Oliver, I've never seen someone more pussy-whipped in my entire life. But you know what? I'm gonna take off, too. Got an early day tomorrow. What are you doing? Wouldn't you like to know? You're not the only one with secrets. Ansel gulped the rest of his beer and smirked. Amelia, it was a pleasure. Hope we can do this again. Are you staring at my tits right now? Yes, I am. Very sorry. Ansel turned to me with a wide smile. Jake, glad you came out, man. And good luck. <laughs> he patted me on the back and jogged after Oliver. After they left, there was an awkward silence. I could feel the alcohol coursing through my veins. Now that they're gone, care to share what the bad boy did? <laughs> I'll take more than a cute smile and a low-cut top to get it out of me. Yeah? For a second there, I thought she was flirting. There was no way. She was a smoking ten, and there was absolutely no way she was interested in me. Unless... Unless she was really drunk. I mean, I was. So... Yeah, that's it, Jake. You're drunk. That's why you think she's flirting with you, you idiot. Right? Then I felt the foot rubbing against my leg. Her foot and the black heels slowly sliding up. We locked eyes. She smirked and bit her lip. Holy shit. Wait, watch out. <laughs> I don't know how or when we reached my apartment, but we were there now. I had my arms around her waist and she was holding on to my collar as I backed into the apartment. I clumsily tried shutting the door with my foot. Come on. Damn it. <laughs> Need help. Nah. I pushed her against the wall next to the TV. Hold on. Hold on. It's too quiet. Too quiet? Mm, don't you think? I, uh, I can fix that. I relaxed a bit, so did she. She straightened her shirt and walked around the room, taking in the few sights my place had to offer. Hmm. As I walked over to the stereo, she continued her way through the room. What? This is definitely the decor of a single man. What does that mean? It's lacking character. So I lack character? <laughs> no. Your place does. I turned on the stereo, connected the Bluetooth, and selected a soft jazz playlist. <laughs> oh, please. So cliche. This? It screams, sleep with me. And that's a problem? <laughs> Why not just blast some genuine? <laughs> I thought I'd try being a bit more subtle. She just rolled her eyes. It was nice to know that sex was at least a thought right now. I couldn't believe this was happening. I rushed over to the kitchen and grabbed an old bottle of red. I wiped the dust from the top of the bottle. Thank God I had this because I'd already gone through all my scotch. Wine? Sure. She wobbled past the coffee table and looked down the hall. You 
You don't even have any pictures. What do you call that? I pointed to the large painting hanging over my couch, a sailboat in front of the Hebridean Island. I purchased it at a friend's yard sale years ago just to be nice. <laughs> that? Well, what kind of picture should I have? I'm a single man, right? You could still have a family. A mom and dad, cousins, nieces and nephews. They aren't worth, uh, hanging up. <laughs> That's sad, isn't it? Nah, I'm okay with it. Hope you like red. But she didn't answer. I poured him anyway and carefully carried him out. A bit of wine sloshed out of one of the glasses onto the carpet, but it was really hard for me to walk straight. I'll clean it later. When I made my way back into the living room, Amelia wasn't there. Was she in my bedroom? Oh, please tell me yes. Jake, over here. Oh, she was sitting at the dining room table. Oh shit, that wasn't good. What the hell is all this? Thank you. I took a seat next to her, my legs touching. You gonna answer me? Huh? This doesn't look like cybercrime stuff, but maybe I'm wrong? She held up a book. The Salem Witch Trials. You training to be a warlock? I'm helping someone with something. I don't know why I didn't just lie and say it was a current project. Helping someone with something? This is a lot of something. Hey, why don't we go to the couch? It's a little more comfortable. <laughs> Oh, please. She smirked and went back to the books. Is this what landed you in hot water with the EAD? No, this is newer, much newer. But it'll most likely land me in even more hot water. And yet you're taking that chance. What a rebel. You must really like whoever you're... Uh, helping. But I didn't respond to that. I just sipped my wine. While she skimmed over some documents, she placed a hand on my leg. This is interesting stuff. I'm surprised you can even read it. Mm, I'm drunk, but not that drunk. Meaning? I'm not reading, I'm just looking at pictures. <laughs> Cute doodles. She held up a sheet where I'd drawn some crazy things including a fire pit, stick figure witches, dog, transparent cube, and even a moth. Hmm. What? Uh, nothing. But it didn't seem like nothing. She removed her hand from my leg and really started to sift through the documents. Really? What is this? That's when she found the copies of the crime scene photos of Layden Falls and Rutherford. Why does this look familiar? Uh, it's an active case. I was actually starting to get nervous. I could feel myself sobering up quickly. What case? Layden Falls? Massachusetts? Someone else's project, I told you. Yeah, but these photos... I've seen these. I don't know about that. Boston Field Office is working on this. That doesn't matter. I help out all over. So does your friend Oliver. Did you... Did you help with this case? Huh. No. Uh, not directly. But I may have passed some files along. It, it definitely looks familiar. Hmm. I just watched her go through my things until eventually she abruptly stopped and turned to face me. Sorry, I do this a lot. Snoop? I'm a very curious person. It's why I'm good at what I do, but... Uh, I'll stop. Good. I took a chance and moved in for a kiss. She accepted and we made out right there, bumping into the table. Some papers fell, but I really didn't care. I still couldn't believe this was happening. Never in a million years did I think I'd be in this position. And hopefully if this continued... I'd be in a lot more positions tonight. I could hear my phone, but fuck it. I wasn't about to stop. I think... I think someone is trying to get a hold of you. And it seems urgent. Well, let it ring. Really? There we go. You sure? Ah, oh, and now they text. <sighs> One second. I had a heart on right now and I was about to lose it. Normally drinking kills it, but I guess she just had that power. But of course she did. Look at her. 
I'm going to kill whoever was blowing up my... <sighs> it was Ray. She called a couple times and sent a text. I opened the text and read, Sorry to bother you so late. I'm at the hospital. Mom had another accident. Things aren't looking good. Oh boy. I was about to answer but stopped myself. Should I? Then another text appeared. Are you still up? Can we meet? Please, I need someone to talk to. <laughs> of course. Use me when it's convenient for you, Ray. I looked back at Amelia who was leaning over the table of documents and books. Her cleavage spilling out. <sighs> Come on. Another text. Sorry if you were asleep or busy. Well? Fuck. Amelia. I gotta go. Uh, go? I'm... I'm afraid so. So it was important. Sadly, yes. Ray was on a bench outside the main entrance of the hospital. Hey. Hey. What are you doing out here? Needed some air. Where's... Lori? She went home to feed the dogs. I told her to get some sleep, too. Why are you still here? <sighs> I don't know. Mom's asleep. Any change? No. They'll know more in the morning. Oh. Have a fun night. What? You reek of alcohol. I hope you didn't drive all this way. <laughs> I took an Uber. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I should have waited for morning, but I'm... I'm falling apart, Jake. I mean, I'm really trying to keep it together, but between Roland and the captain and, and my work and mom and the thought of being arrested... Uh... I know. Yeah? Yeah. I should have never gotten you involved, no matter how much Roland pressed. She's like a cancer, right? Destroys everything around her. Yeah. Except that, ultimately, it was my choice, so don't blame yourself. I... I talked to her. What? When? Last night. You did? What, uh, what'd she say? She's falling apart, too. That we already knew. Where is she? Some inn in Idaho. Hiding out? For now. Jake, I also talked to Michelle. Michelle Collins? Jesus, thanks for filling me in. I've been busy. I see. Did you find out about her family? Where she's been? Has she talked to the cops? She's looking for Roland. She won't go to the cops until she talks to her. <sighs> what do we do, Jake? We're no closer to solving this than when I first went out to visit Roland in Washington. That's not true. We know about Sunderland. Yeah, sure. Another name to add to the list. Doesn't help much. And every day I expect to get a call from Joyce or another department head. It's only a matter of time, Ray. I know. Should we go see Roland? I can't leave Mom. Not now. What do you want to do? But she just shrugged. I put my arm around her and we just sat there and let the time pass slowly. You sure this is the place? It has to be. Why? He didn't answer. He just made his way to the front desk. One moment. Do you see her? Now? What? Do you see her? Claire? No. Not since last night. Oh. Hi there. Looking for a room? Actually, no. We're looking for a person. Oh? Do you know of a Emily Rowland staying with you? I can show you a picture if you like. I'm sorry. I can't give out any information on customers. I'm sure, but 
This is really important. Are you cops? No. Then I really can't do anything for you. If I show you a picture, can you at least tell me if she passed through? I guess. I could try. While Hal pulled out his phone, I walked around the small lobby. As I passed by one of the large windows overlooking the parking lot, I saw her. There. On the other side. With another woman pushing a cleaning cart. Hey, Hal. Yeah? She's here. What? Over there. I see her. Thank you for your time, miss. No, wait. Hey, excuse me. We rushed out. Excuse me, hey. What are you doing? The woman's shouts halted Roland and the cleaning woman. It took her a moment until she realized it was me. She jogged up and grabbed me by the arms. Um, what? You're okay. Yeah. Roland's confusion was evident as she looked from me to Hal, then back to me. Sorry. They they just showed up. It's okay. You know them? I know her. Um, my name's Hal Langston. I really need to talk to you. You a cop? No. She looked at me for confirmation. I nodded. He's been looking for you. Why? I'd like to tell you. Can we talk? It was a cloudy day today, but it wasn't supposed to rain. At least that's what the news said. Well? I must have missed Hal's question. I'm sorry, what? Were you up north? Sorry, but I'm not sure how much I should say. Here we are. Mayor walked up with three cups of coffee. Behind her, I could see maintenance man Brody filling the bird bath. He wore dirty overalls and an orange cap. He couldn't help but stare at us as he held the hose steady. Do you need anything else? No. Thank you. If Bridget needs any help... She's fine. Don't worry. Mayor smiled and walked back to the office, saying something to Brody on the way. Wait, you've been working here? Just while I stay. I hate to rush things, but I need to know. Were you in Alaska? <sighs> yes. Were you at the scene? Michelle's eyes drifted down to her coffee. Hold on, hold on. Before we get too into this, I need to know who you are. My name is Hal Langston. I've been looking to talk to you for a while now. I know what you've been through in both Leyden and Rutherford. I know what Michelle's been through in Alaska. And I know others are involved. And how do you know all of this? Because I've lived it. You've lived it? David Summers, Shane Powell. Patricia Sanders, Noah Montgomery, April Law, Rowan Dwyer, Sefton Trust, and Hal Langston. He said it's happened to him. In Maine. When? 2015. After my trip. But before Sanders. That's right. Wait, what was the other name? Rowan Dwyer? That's right. He had a similar story before he was shot dead. I don't know of a Rowan. There was a Stephen D. in Sefton's notebook. You found a notebook? In Sefton's home, yeah. Actually, I believe David found it, but left it for me. Before he shot those people? Yeah. After he shot them, he died himself. I did remember David saying the name Rowan when he was listing off names. Did Trust have it wrong? Or was Stephen D. someone else? Listen, I know you've been searching for answers. So have I. But there aren't many out there right now. And you don't know why? I know you and I aren't the only ones searching. Who? The ones that killed her parents. Again, Michelle's eyes dropped. I'm sorry about that. Really. They came after me too. Who are they? I don't know. But they pretend to be cops. At least one of them does. I've seen him flash a badge. So you've seen him? A couple of times. From far away. When? Over the past year. I've been keeping tabs on a lot of people. Like who? You. For instance? You kept tabs on me? Sorry about that. 
I didn't really understand his meaning until I gave it a bit more thought. The brown van. I hired a private investigator. I needed him to keep an eye on you. Why didn't you try to contact me yourself? I uh, had my reasons. Reasons you don't plan to share? I was keeping tabs on a lot of people. Elliot Benson, Jonathan Kramer, Friends of Laws, David Summers' mother, Julia Meadows, Michelle Collins. He motioned to Michelle, then sipped his coffee. Julia, what happened to her? Story is, she killed herself. Same with Benson, same with Jonathan Kramer. I don't know that name. Involved with Rowan Dwyer. Is it true? Is what true? That they killed themselves. I believe it to be. Why? Because Michelle was attacked, right? That is different. Of course it is. Plus, I've, um, been visited by Roger. More nightmares? No, but it it feels real. And I was thinking maybe the other survivors experienced what I experienced with Roger. Like, he told me to kill myself. And my mom, she showed up and told me I was supposed to die. But you didn't suffer from sleep paralysis or night terrors prior to the ship disaster. No. No. She may have a point, though. It happened with Montgomery, too. No one Montgomery was part of a murder-suicide in Bend, Oregon. But that can't be related. It is. Suicide's off the table because David wasn't able to. He said he tried. Trust, Sanders, Summers, Law, Powell. They didn't commit suicide. Right. And neither did I. What? You tried? Several times. I wasn't able to. Physically. But Montgomery's case is labeled wrong. He didn't actually commit suicide. His wife was able to wrestle the gun away before she died. Is that true? Before Layden, I spent all my time looking into his case. Did you know about the cruise disaster? I wasn't sure about it. He visited me before, though. Several years after, yeah. After my situation. (laughs) When he had more hair. So you two have met before. Why didn't you tell me, Michelle? Because it was once, and he didn't even say much. I thought he was a reporter or something. I just checked up on her to see if she was okay. Then afterwards, I heard about Summers. Then later, I heard your story. And I decided to keep a watch on her in case you showed up. And you did. You know, Noah Montgomery was a name I didn't look into much. Well, you can add him to the list. Okay, okay. But you guys just keep throwing names out. Like, I thought you were going to solve some shit if you talked to her, and now you're here and all you're doing is muddying it all up. I want to know what happened to my parents, and Roger, I want to know what's happening to me. I told you, I can't explain everything. I can only tell you of my experiences. But you said you needed a Dr. Roland. You went through something similar? In Maine. Like with Michelle, they didn't find the bodies. We did eventually. Sure. And I know they're out there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm reminded of it often. I sipped my coffee slowly, waiting for anyone to talk, but they remained silent. I took a moment more to contemplate and eventually decided to lay it all on the line. So you're on the run. They never found the bodies, but they were ready to convict me anyway. So yeah, I took off. In 2015? Yeah. I'm on the run too, so I don't know how much help I can be. Honestly, I don't even know why you're here. I thought... We could help each other. You and I have experienced the same things. Not exactly. I don't have what David did. If anything, it's more like Michelle. Sure, you're infected. (sighs) Infected? I hadn't heard it put like that before. I don't know exactly what it is. But anyone dragged into this nightmare never fully recovers. Yeah, that's the truth. What about you? How are you still alive? Because there's a trick to living. What's that? I do the same thing you've been doing for the past year. I run. And I keep running. You run? That's right. When the headaches start to subside, I know my time is near. If I leave, I can avoid the storm. I thought about my escape from the farmhouse with David and Julia that night. We eventually made it out. But David... It's not easy. That's why I'm searching for an answer. I took another sip of coffee and looked over to the birdbath with several birds fluttering about. I had no idea how long we'd been talking, but Brody was gone. Any idea how many people? Like us? Like you. April, Noah, Rowan, Patricia, Sefton, Shane, 
David, that's all I've got. But there's most likely more. I believe so. Well, like I said, I'm on the run. Wanted. I crashed my car, lost all my files. I have nothing. No money, not even a gun. We can help each other. I don't see how. And I don't know about involving any more people. Michelle shouldn't be here. Yeah, but I'm already involved. We have no leads, and how are we going to find any others? Your friend, Detective Ray. She was helping you. (sighs) Yeah. I kind of fucked things up there. So she won't help anymore? There's a chance she'll be made. Her and Jake. Which will be my fault. So no. I don't think if that happens she'll be in the mood to help out any longer. (sighs) There's others that can help us. What, cops? I thought we shouldn't go to the cops. Not cops. He leaned forward, creepily. Who do you see? What? He looked to Michelle, then back to me. How did you find those bodies in Alaska? I went with a guide. We explored the woods. Bull, you had help. Yeah, a guide. No, 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 no. You had help. You see someone. Yeah, she does. Who? A shiver crept up my spine. I shook it away. (sighs) David, mostly. David Summers? Yeah. He helped you find the bodies? Eventually, but we were out there a while. Yeah, that happens. It can be frustrating sometimes. But it's how we found you here. I thought you had a P.I. He lost track of you after the train incident. That's when she helped me. Claire? Who's Claire? My fiance, ex fiance. I lost her, but she's still around. From time to time, she helps. <sighs> They're going to be our lifelines? Not always, because you can't always trust them. No? No, because sometimes they'll lead you down a dark path. And that's why you need to figure out what you want to do. Because we can't stay here long. Why? Because. I was warned about this place. He turned his attention to the inn, running his eyes along the light pink building. You were warned? Yeah. So was I. believe this shit? Of course I believe it. She sent us on a wild goose chase. Remember? Search for Kent. Find out what happened to Kent. It wasn't a wild goose chase. It led us nowhere. What nowhere? We just got finished talking to Paul Jacobs the other day. And he has no idea where Kent is. Meanwhile, she's been talking to Roland this whole time. How do you want to handle it? (laughs) What do you mean? We need to call her. Now. She could tell us where Roland is. You know that for sure. Yes. Her last call with her was two weeks ago. So? We were able to finally get the call logs from Roland's phone by getting a list of contacts through the service provider. But only after we were given the go-ahead and had the department head sign off. The fact that we had to wait for this already pisses me off. But now we learn that after two trips to Tampa... We were lied to. We never talked to Detective Ray the first time. You're sticking up for this girl? No, but I don't want you all hot-headed before we make contact. You want to make the call? I think I should, yes. Just then Highland entered. Got something for you. What? State trooper was informed of a weird guy going around asking about Roland. What? He dropped her name at some gas station over by the border. Clerk told the trooper... And now they're asking what they should do. You got anybody else on this? No. No. We specifically told the SAC that we didn't need any help at the moment. This trooper give a description? Lanky guy. Balding and driving a brown van. A brown van? Who could that be? But Mick just shrugged. He's on the line. What do you want me to tell him? How did he know to contact Spokane? You asked us to put out an APB. Plus, they got another call in Coeur d'Alene. About a similar person throwing Roland's name around at a motel in Rathdrum. We gotta have him tailed, right? We may want to talk to him, too. After we call Detective Ray. I'll handle that now. Tell your trooper to keep a safe distance, but see what else this guy is up to. 
Want me to bring him in? No. See where else he goes first. Okay. Reg, I'm we- calling now. There were several names and numbers on this list. We would go through them all, but obviously Detective Ray was the most important. So we started there. But as I dialed, I saw Robarts jump on the laptop and grab the list for me. What are you doing? <sighs> Going through the rest of these. Uh, you gonna answer that? Is that a Boston area code? Shit. Yeah. That can't be good, right? <sighs> Fuck. Me and Jake were in the hospital cafeteria waiting to hear more about Mom. Lori was still upstairs sitting on the chair by her bed. But now I had a lump in my throat. A Boston number. Don't answer it. See if they leave a message. Could be spam. Yeah, sure. Just spam. The phone stopped buzzing. We both stared at it until... There's a message. I picked it up and listened. Hello, Detective Ray. This is Regina Torf with the Boston Field Office. We spoke last time I was in Tampa, and I really need to talk to you now. It's very urgent. Call me back as soon as you get this message. Well, not good, huh? She fucked us, Jake. Roland fucked us. How the hell did you find her? I had help. You saw her again, didn't you? What the hell? I told you. I know, but I told you that it's random. It's not random. What? It's not random and you know it. Well, she didn't show up to help until now. What could I do? You could have told me earlier. I'm out here hitting up every motel and gas station in the area. I wanted to make sure. So you talked to her? Roland? A bit, yeah. Where are you? Just past Belgrove on 95. Okay, well, hurry up. Just an FYI. Someone may be following me. Someone? State trooper. What? I'm not positive, but he's been several cars back for a while now. Don't lead him here. I won't. I was trying to get confirmation by slowing down and changing lanes, but he stayed behind me. That's not good. Trust me. I can't afford to get pulled over. I got too many unpaid tickets. Well, keep me informed. Hold on. Wait. What? Okay, good. He's taking the exit. So you're fine? Yeah, I think so. Okay, hurry up. I was standing in the field to the left of the inn. I looked back at the picnic table where only Michelle sat, drinking her third cup of coffee. Roland had gone in to use the bathroom and I used that time to call Gary. Please don't leave the cops here. Although, I wasn't sure why he needed to come here in the first place. Except that he could also help fill in Roland with some information he'd help me gain about the other parties involved. Well? He's on his way. Okay, and he's pulled off. He took the exit. Good. Thank you, Maria. Are you sure we'll be able to intercept? Right up here. Should be passing within the next 15 minutes. Well, don't miss him. We won't. After I left two messages for Ray, Robards found that another number on the list belonged to a federal agent named Mazzaro. Robards recognized the name and called both his friend Ansel Williams and Mazzaro himself. But Mazzaro didn't answer. Of course. Do you believe this shit, Reg? I mean, did she really have federal help? Well, that's what we need to find out. But first things first. Do you two think this guy's an agent? Who, the pedo in the van? Who the fuck knows? It wouldn't make sense. None of this shit makes sense. After Robards talked to his friend and left a message for Mazzaro, 
he contacted the SAC. Walker told us to find out about the guy in the van, so that's what we're doing now. Detective Island drove down some dirt roads until we finally hit the highway. Here we are. Could he take another exit? One before this spot, but there's another trooper there. Maria will call me if he spots the van. So we wait? It shouldn't be long now. believe Michelle had found me. And that guy, Hal. How could he still be alive if he truly experienced everything the others did? Was he telling me the truth? I splashed more water on my face and stared at my tired self in the mirror. I needed a drink. I needed something. Anything. I felt tense and anxious and tired and sick and... <sighs> I needed to call Ray. I need to tell her that Michelle was here. I needed to tell her what Hal told me. You're running out of time, Roland. When I looked back up, I saw David in the mirror's reflection. He was standing behind me. You keep warning me. You need help. I've needed help for a long time, David. I won't be able to help much longer. In all honesty, have you been much help anyway? You found the bodies. Sure. You helped after letting me and Jake walk around the woods aimlessly for how long? It's a struggle. Every day. But I was there. I won't be able to help you soon. <sighs> okay, David. Noted. Sheila. Nova. April. Rowan. James. Shane. Hal. Seth. Patricia. David. <sighs> Again? Sheila. Nova. April. Rowan. James. Shane. Hal. Seth. Patricia. David. Jordan. Jordan? I don't remember him saying that name before. David? Sheila. Noah. April. Rome. He just kept repeating James. the names. Shane. How? Seth. David, what's going on? Trisha. Why here? David. Why now? Jordan. I turned to face him, Sheila. but he was fading away. Noah. April. Rome. James. Shane. How? Seth. Patricia. David. Jordan. Hurry, Roland. Fuck. I wasn't sure what was going on, but something didn't seem right. In fact, the sky was even grayer than before. I rushed over to the front desk. Mare was on the phone. I grabbed it from her. I clicked the receiver and dialed quickly. Roland, what the hell are you doing? This is urgent. What happened? David was trying to warn me, so before I forgot the names again, I called Ray. Pick up, damn it. Roland, what happened? Come on, Ray, please. <sighs> Come on. Roland? Ray! Uh, I'm busy right now, Roland. And it looks like your call logs are out because now I have the feds calling. And so does Jake. And the only reason they would call both Ray, of Ray, stop. I have something important to tell you. I saw David again just now. I don't care anymore, Roland. Please, Ray, before I forget. I have too much going on, and odds are I'm in deep shit now. You happy? Everything I did for you. I'm sorry, but listen, uh, Sheila, Noah, April, um, uh, Rowan. What are you doing, Roland? The names. These are the names David gave me. They're tied together. I think that's why he's telling me. I don't care. Please, Ray. We're fucked. Do you get that? It's only a matter of time uh, now. James, that's gotta be Sunderland and Shane and Hal. I met Hal. He's here. He showed up. I talked to him. He's alive. Stop babbling. Me and Jake are going to go to jail, Roland. God damn it, Ray. Listen to me, please. I think something bad is about to happen. What's going to happen? I don't know. But something doesn't feel right. And David's been warning me. Now he just keeps saying those names over and over again. So you need to write these down before I forget. Me and Jake are dead. Done. Please, uh, Sheila, Noah, April, Rowan, James, Shane. 
uh, Hal and uh, Sefton, Patricia, David, and, uh, and Jordan. Obviously, we already knew several of the names, but it helped saying them in order of how I heard them. Ray, I think these are the names of everyone involved. Maybe there's more, but these are the ones that David keeps mentioning. I, I don't... I mean, I can't. Ray! Fine. Go. Say them again. Uh, Sheila, Noah, April, um, Rowan, uh, James, Shane, Hal, Sefton, Patricia, David, and then he said Jordan. That's it. I think that's all of them. Ray? Ray! All I heard was static. I pressed down on the receiver. Mayor, the phone isn't working. Mayor? But she was just staring at me quizzically. What? Sheila? You said Sheila? Yeah, so? She shook her head slightly, looking confused. She then took the phone from me and listened herself. I wonder if the phone line is down. That's when I noticed Hal standing in the street, talking to himself. What the hell? I wonder what's taking her so long. You think she's nervous? She shouldn't be. We're not cops. And she knows you. And I told her what I know, for the most part. But not everything. We need to talk more. I looked back at the inn, and for some reason, the place felt off. There she is. We saw Roland run by an open hallway and towards the front office. What's she doing? She looks to be in a hurry. You don't think she would call the cops on us, do you? No. No, she wouldn't. That's when I noticed my headache. There was no throbbing pain. I felt... Oh no. I spun myself around to look at the whole inn. I felt a presence. And that's when I noticed her standing in the middle of the highway. Hey, what's wrong? I couldn't believe it was her. It shouldn't have been, right? Hey, where are you going? She stood there, smiling, warm and inviting. Why was she here? I hadn't seen her in a long time. It wasn't Claire. No. It was Chrissy. I made my way to her as if in a trance. Something wasn't right. But I couldn't help myself. She held her hand out to me. I looked up and down the road, but no cars came. Why are you here? Come closer, Hal. Come closer. I walked onto the road and stood before her, wanting to touch her, but she had pulled her hand back. Chrissy. It's me. I miss you, Hal. I... I miss you, too. Why did you leave me? I had to. You quickly packed your bags that night and took off. I told you that day might come. But you never explained why. I couldn't. You wouldn't believe me. How do you know? Because it's hard to believe. No one ever believes. That's not true. Michelle Michelle believes. believes. Roland believes. They have to believe. They've seen it. They've experienced it. And you didn't want me to experience it? I wanted to protect you. Protect me? Because you loved me? I did. Yes. But... But I know it's not you. Not here. Not now. But it is me. It's me. It isn't. I had to fight this. It wasn't her. She couldn't be out here. She wouldn't be out here. How? I looked back to see Michelle standing in the field behind me. What are you doing? Tell her how. Tell her what? Tell her what's coming. It's coming here? It's already here. Come on, man. Seriously? I tried calling Hal again. I needed to tell him I was definitely being followed now. We were the only two cars on the road this far south. I couldn't chance being caught. Since Hal wasn't answering, 
I would have to just drive past the inn and hope I could lead the car away. <sighs> shoot, shoot, shoot! I wasn't even sure if the car belonged to a cop or one of those fuckers that apparently attacked that girl's parents. Or maybe somebody else entirely. Either way, do Hal a favor and lose them. I checked my GPS. The inn was just ahead, just past this curve. I'll drive right past it and then let Hal know I led them away. I had to lead them away. But then, my whole plan was thrust out the window as I came around the bend, standing there in the middle of the road. Hal. Shit! Hal, watch out! I heard the vehicle coming around the bend, but I didn't have time to react. Out of the corner of my eye, the van swerved. Welcome back, Hal. In that split second, Chrissy disappeared. I felt my body lift as the rear corner of the van slammed into me, launching my body into the sky. It didn't hurt, but my body somersaulted, eventually coming down into the road with a thud, knocking me out instantly. Oh my god! Me and Mayor ran out of the main office just as Hal was launched into the air. The van that struck him was on two wheels and heading for the woods. Deja vu hit as I thought about the night in the woods with David as we headed for the farmhouse. The van slammed into several trees as it tumbled down a hill out of sight. I saw Michelle run to the road. Wait, Michelle! She noticed it too. Another car, a black Chrysler, came around the bend and immediately hit the brakes, swerving around the fallen Hal, spinning to a stop on the other side of the main office, near the parking lot entrance. Michelle then ran to Hal and pulled him back. Both Brody and Bridget ran up hearing the commotion. Three people came out of the black Chrysler and I instantly knew they were cops. Shit. Jesus, what the fuck? Where'd he go? He hit someone. Van's over there. Shit. As we took in the scene, more people ran out of the motel we were next to. Highland made for the other side of the road, past the skid marks towards the fallen trees. What the hell is going on? Highland disappeared as he made his way down the hill into the woods. Check on the dew, Reg. I'll help Highland. Okay. Robards jogged off after Highland, also disappearing from view. Roland, help me! Roland? And that's when I noticed her, standing by the main office, facing me. Our eyes met. Holy shit. Roland! Detective Emily Roland! I put my hand over my gun and changed directions, heading right for her. Don't move. Somebody help me! He's bleeding! (sighs) Shit. Too much was going on. The woman next to Roland ran over to the younger woman, pulling the man to the grass. We need to help him. Sure. So you can run off? He needs help. (sighs) Go. Roland walked in front of me, and we made our way to the road. Roland helped, and they finally got the man fully onto the grass. Mayor? Mayor, my phone isn't working. I tried calling an ambulance. I'll try the office. Office phone isn't working either. I was so confused. FBI? That's right. Been looking for you for a while. You're gonna wish you didn't find me. Not now. Is that a threat? Not at all. What the hell was that? Oh shit. I looked over to Michelle. I could see she was visibly shaken. She stopped tending to Hal and stood nervously. No. I can't be. What was that noise? I turned to the agent. You have a phone? Of course. Want to call for backup? What kind of game are you playing right now? Try calling someone. She slowly took out her phone and dialed. She put it up to her ear for a couple of seconds. Nothing but static. I noticed the sky was much grayer than it had been earlier. No. This can't be happening. What is that? Mick? Was that an animal? Just then, one of the men that had gone to inspect the van came back up onto the road. He moved slowly, his gun hanging limply in his hands. Mick? As he got closer, we could see he was bleeding. Blood dripped down his arms. What the hell happened? Mick! I... I... I was attacked! Just as he crossed the road, he stumbled and fell. The female agent bent down over him. She quickly looked back at me as if I would try something. Mick! 
What the hell happened to you? I'm so, something. Something attacked me. What's something? I looked from him back to Hal. I couldn't believe that this was happening again. Why here? Why now? Then I noticed Kent, standing in the middle of the road, grinning. Roland, it's time. Paralyzed. Written by Robert M. Lamb. Edited by Amber Simpson and Robert M. Lamb. Starring Amy LeRae as Roland, Catabelle as Ray, Jack Austin as Jake, Ariel Hack as Michelle, Mitchell Beck as Ansel, Mark Karoftis as Oliver, Joseph Harmon as Hal, Rachel Stidham as Mayor, Brandon Levine as Ed, Gina Coyle as Torv, Chris Titoli as Robards, co-starring Lindsay Riley, Alexander Dottie, James Brown, Anthony Mayer, Corey Pettit, Kyle Mooney, David Quiqui, Joseph Brzezinski, Monica Ward, Amber Simpson, Sherman Alpert, Ali Holcomb, Ick Engelhard, Beth Ann Schwebke, Mia Sukvalai, and Robert M. Lamb as David. Music provided by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Eldritch T'Challa of Nemesis Black at ReverbNation.com slash Nemesis Black. If you enjoy this podcast, don't forget to rate and review. This has been a Seven Lamb production.